This video is an assembly of footage and stills of a get-together of persons with a common interest in a World War II military vehicle called a weasel. Weasels are relatively small machines designed to operate using tracks like a tank. These were developed for and used during the war effort. Some weasels were configured as amphibians and could operate in the water. These unique vehicles were all excellent off-road and snow machines. Weasel Fest is the name given to an event that occurred in 2008 and again in 2013. It brought together like-minded fanatics for a two-day rally in Iowa, USA. The gathering was hosted by Mike Howard and his Liberty Auto Restoration Business, LAR. Mike, an avid weasel fan and collector, was also one of the sources for parts for the weasel community. These are a couple of images of the town of Elkhorn in Iowa where the event was held. On the first day we assembled on one of Mike's properties, whipped out our weasels and got acquainted. We then headed off to enjoy lunch and introductions. Mike was the creator of the original Weasel Forum, which unfortunately is no longer available. Mike Howard welcomed us at our first lunch and explained how he became interested in weasels and his desire to create a solid community for exchange of ideas and weasel information. So many people, what is a weasel? Even a lot of World War II veterans, well, I never saw one of those. And so it's failed and it's failed to tell, uh, you know, so many facets, the engineering, the, the applications, the type of people that wrote in these. So uh, I just find it fascinating. So, I got bit by the bug, and uh, as you can see, the, the, the various weasels, the graveyards, the parks, and things. So, uh, uh, as long as I can, I want to keep trying to keep bringing as many of these uh, back to life, and uh, uh, want to try to help promote for other. I'm excited to see so many other younger folks and young people that this can, can continue, and even after I'm long gone, that these uh, can be something to be enjoyed for the next. Uh, 100, 150 years or longer. So uh, I hope, you know, 100 years from now, there's still weasels running around, even after yeah. a lot of us are long gone. And, so, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll uh, get things uh, in motion here for Weasel Fest. Appreciate all you coming. Appreciate you having yeah, me. Yeah, thank you. Behind Mike's wife, Lou, a sign can be seen posted up on the wall. We have been clearly identified for who we are Weasel Fanatics. After the passing of 70 years, the original drive tracks that weasels would operate on had reached the end of their lifespan, and many of these unique machines were languishing in need of replacement tracks, as this was the Achilles heel for these vehicles. With his knowledge and resources, Mike spearheaded a project in the United States to recreate good serviceable tracks for the weasel. The tracks that Mike and others have produced in recent years have given new life to many of these World War II machines where a measure of safety and reliability are of concern. The 2008 Weasel Fest event was such a huge success that Mike decided to reprise the gathering in late June 2013. Twenty or so weasel owners, many with girlfriends and families from across the USA, attended. If it wasn't for the obstacles of time, distance, and finances, many more would have participated in this unique event. My friend and I were the only foreigners to attend. I loaded up my weasel and drove a thousand miles from home in Ontario, Canada. For the enjoyment of those that have a similar interest in these machines, I have assembled this video with images from the event. Although this video is largely intended for those who have an affinity for these unique vehicles, the casual viewer may be able to relate to the camaraderie and fun of events like this, where people with a common interest can gather together from far and wide for some good company and depart with some tall stories. These past images have been showing my first foray into the water. Rick had decided that he would come out and give me some pointers on amphibious operation. This kind offer was much appreciated. Also on board was my fellow Canadian, Brian. 
it would seem that all three of us were willing to take the risks that came with the inaugural swim. All seemed to go well and we didn't have any issues while we were out in the water. Unseen by the viewer are the mitful of life jackets that are readily available at our knees. Here Rick is waving off approaching vehicles to stay away. Rookie at the helm, he says. As we climb up out of the water, Mike notices that I have collected some seaweed souvenirs attached to the bow of the machine. As I prepare to go back in the water for a second swim, Russ walks by saying, Get it, Steven Spielberg. Which I suspect was his note of encouragement to hurry up and get back in the water. For the unseasoned occupants, the low freeboard can be a little unnerving at first. After all, it is only a 15 foot long, 5,000 pound steel bathtub that floats. Unfortunately, as you can see, it looks like I developed a bit of fogging on my GoPro lens. But of course, it didn't deter the enjoyment in any way. As we're loading up for our third run out into the water, Rob finds some important piece of my photography hardware lying on the ground and kindly hands it over. For your GoPro? I'm not quite sure where the pipe bomb comments are coming from. It was a perfect afternoon, and the waters were crammed with various amphibious craft. Mike had brought out his BV-204. The 204 was giving an excellent demonstration as to its capabilities in the water. Here is Mike doing a little surfing on top of the 204. All round an active day in the water, even a lineup at the entry exit point.
Here's Rob pulling out of the water in the 204 with Mike still sitting on the top. Here is Mike out in the water in his mud encrusted weasel. And then after he exits the water, a little inspection by everyone. This Clark tractor is one of Mike's many favorite toys. Of course, we all had to take a thorough, detailed look at Patrick's gorgeous, fresh weasel restoration. Here we see Russ with Patrick, his arms stretched out, telling us another one of his fish stories. Another shot of beautiful downtown Elkhorn, where we have all gathered to have a second lunch hosted by Mike and Lou. And here is an image of the overflow parking across the road. We kindly received a tour of the LAR facilities, rummaging through inventory, chatting about product. Patrick brought his family, as his daughter is an avid military buff. Many of the vehicles participated in the mud bath, as can be seen here with the 204 and Mike in his weasel. I heard that wives and girlfriends insisted on coming to the event, and I recollect hearing from most that they wouldn't have missed it for the world. Here we see Oddball sitting up in the turret of Mike's Stewart tank, and a picture of my weasel in the brush. This is Tom checking out one of the many as yet undocumented data plates for his database. Here's a shot of the great food at our second lunch provided by our gracious hosts. And who knew that it would come complete with entertainment and that Mike was a member of a band and he shared with us his vocal talents. Here are Mike and Lou themselves taking a moment to enjoy the entertainment. Mike had decided that it was a great idea to have desserts in the shape of weasels. Those desserts had a much shorter lifespan than the real thing. After lunch we went out for a tour. You'll see here some footage of the convoy en route traveling all unmolested on the back roads of Iowa. Here comes Kevin in his nicely restored machine with John and Russ. This was our rescue service truck, which was fortunately unneeded. Some dust clouds as we work our way through the countryside. You can see that it doesn't matter how old you are, you can thoroughly enjoy a ride out on a weasel.
After the 25 mile trip, we're heading back into Elkhorn. We headed back to our base camp to relax, share more of our stories, information, and experiences. This pretty much wraps up what I have for you, but I thought I'd take a moment to put some names to some faces. This is Paul. And here's Rick. This is Russ with Patrick's machine. Patrick describing more on his restoration. Barb showing off some of her wares. This would be me being taken for a ride in the mud bath. Tom doing more of what he loves doing. An oddball on top of the steward. Another photo of Rick. Dave in the middle with Colton beside him. Here is Brian. This is Eric listening intently to some conversation. Oddball and Rick. This is Kevin preparing to head out for a ride in his machine. Here's Mike and Russ and Scott. And Rob, Michaela. This is Robert. I think he drove up from Texas. I wonder what my first clue to that was. And here's John, longtime military vehicle collector. And Steve, he came with his daughter, Michaela. And of course, our hosts, Lou and Mike. Hat. Not just any hat. Weaselfest hat. Well, if you made it this far, thank you very much for bearing through this. I hope you found this of some interest. I know we all had a great time.